critical functions on ships' bridges. The vector length in minutes, in one minute increments, to uh, assess the collision uh, exactly as it is later. This is a built-in trainer, Tara Maneuver. Your own ship is in the middle going southwest. We've got the tag on a close passing uh, vessel and all three of those are within a quarter mile uh, within 30 minutes. This shows some uh, channel uh, separation navigation guidelines stabilized by satellite LORAN uh, for the accuracy and the dependability. This shows the recommended route of our ferry uh, going from uh, Dunkirk uh, crossing the channel at right angles, which is the recommended IMO passing. Pushing the button for trial course on the line properly crossing at right angles. You see our own ship moving at 30 to 1 speeded up times. And mainly collision avoidance systems in response to a MARAD administration uh, industry ride requirement in 1960. Uh, the other product was a fuel saving autopilot which is uh, important now. Uh, in terms of meeting EPA regulations on reducing uh, the greenhouse gases. Uh, Digiplot is a precision automatic radar plotter. It uh, displays its uh, true and relative vectors on either a north up or head up display. You're viewing uh, actual operation at sea in the English Channel on a ferry. Uh, there's a flashing symbol on a vessel coming down our side uh, we happen to be on a, a head up 12, uh, 12 mile scale with six minute vectors. Uh, we just push the button to make it uh, north up. We're going approximately due north. Uh, the other vessel is coming down our side and he's actually changing course. Our tracking shows it. Uh, the old watch officer just punched relative to verify the collision risk is uh, quite safe. He's coming down our side. Uh, <clears throat> the other vessels are shown in true plot. Uh, buoys, of course, are shown with uh, no vectors at all. So the, the true aspect of all the other vessels are what you would see out the window. Uh, you, can, uh, you can judge aspect uh, numerically by tagging uh, uh, with the flashing symbol on a single ship and reading the range and bearing, uh, its course and speed, and it's CPA, time to CPA. You notice the close tracking, we're now on a uh, closer range scale, and the tracking is within a quarter of a mile, uh, sliding down our side. Uh, once the other vessel clears us, you can see he will begin a slow turn around our stern. Uh, extending the vector now from six minutes up to eight, you can see we have a, a near collision of close passing with, a, with a, another vessel. Uh, <clears throat> who is uh, actually in our way, the point of s six minutes is exactly the same time when we'll be at the same position in the water, which is the true plot of a collision. Uh, we are very accurate in the uh, IMO ARPA specifications. The relative course is measured with our radar and Digiplot software to approximately uh, uh, less around one degree. Uh, the, uh, the specification uh, uh, is only 12 degrees in the, uh, in the ARPA spec, so we're certainly an order of magnitude better than the requirement. Uh, that vessel now is sliding down our side, and you'll notice with the heading mark that's in the bearing circle up at the top of the tube, uh, is showing we're turning left. We did the safe thing uh, for normal visual collision avoidance, that is, if you steer for where another vessel is now, that is, his location as a dot, uh, we in fact uh, uh, have no way of hitting him. We're absolutely clear. We just change back to a 12 mile scale, and you can see the bright display, uh, daylight display, of the, uh, of the radar coastline of uh, England, uh, the, uh, the Dover area. Uh, you see there's another vessel with a very short vector, Remember, we're doing about 20 knots at six minutes. That's two miles away. Uh, he's doing probably a five or six knots, five knots, possibly a fisherman, but anyone uh, so slowing down, going down our side. There's another vessel uh, just next to us. Punching relative, you notice it's a, it's a very close passing for him, but he is, in fact, uh, slowing speed.
to allow us to pass. Uh, notice the other vessels all around are plotted. DigiPlot actually uh, uh, measures every echo uh, in a PPI that a, that a mate would look at to pick out those that he would either manually plot or manually acquire in all competitive ARPAs. Uh, ours, our system uh, analyzes every echo by measurement, compares it and divides it into ship sized and larger than any ship could be, which would be designated as extended or land. Uh, we don't bother uh, analyzing uh, anything beyond the closest coastline, is, uh, which is usually shown as a dotted outline uh, with three successive radar scans. Uh, the, uh, the other vessel in this case has now stopped. You can see his, he looks like a buoy with a circle only. We have a tag on him that we're reading the, uh, the digital readout to, to the right of the display. This is another uh, <coughs> other day's uh, another scene with the uh, you can see the traffic passing uh, close by uh, ferries crossing the uh, the English Channel and the tankers going toward Rotterdam and coming from from the uh, southeast. Uh, <coughs> our own ship is always shown brighter than all the rest of them. And uh, if there is a CPA alarm set in, uh, say a tenth mile or quarter mile, uh, with a ten, five or 10, 15 minute warning, half an hour warning, you will see them brighten. You'll get an audible uh, sound, which can be silenced. But a flashing red light is shown on the instrument. And uh, the ones that violated it are shown uh, brighter than normal. Uh, here you can see this other vessel is picking up speed, and his true plot is shown again very much uh, in the same position as our own. We are now turning uh, to avoid, uh, <clears throat> and you notice the, the accuracy and the uh, other vectors are maintaining uh, their own course and speed properly uh, to the much better than IMO uh, ARPA accuracy. Every now and then the mate will touch the uh, true relative vector button. Uh, the glance at re relative shows the uh, the threat of collision and ranks them uh, as though it were a dartboard with your own ship's uh, symbol being in the middle. Anything pointing directly at you is going to either hit you or be close passing uh, either ahead of you or behind or astern. Here now we see essentially a triple collision. We're turning left into uh, one and there are two others that are threatening. We're turning away from them into the one that's coming directly at us. At, uh, at six minutes, we'll both be at the same spot. Uh, <clears throat> the radar is scanning approximately once every three seconds. Uh, you can index the, uh, the vector and all others are moving the same way. So it shows the exact time of ex execution for a crossing on the, on the course we want. This also would apply to uh, a land intersection such as the uh, Concordia. Had they been trying a trial maneuver several minutes ahead of time, they would, seen, would have seen that the actual trial maneuver, or the actual maneuver they made uh, would in fact, with the advance and transfer of the Concordia, uh, run aground as it did. Uh, you needn't have a collision to get the AIS results. Our trial maneuver, which we've had from, uh, from be beginning in all 550 production units, has always been in there for, uh, for ships, and it's o only most recently that it was mentioned in G-Captain uh, for the idea of possibly using it for anti-grounding. It's an excellent uh, trial maneuver because most uh, officers today don't get a chance to maneuver the ship much. So they never get a feel for the ship. Uh, this gives, restores the, the architect's worst advance and transfer characteristics into the trial. So it makes it ultra safe and, uh, and, uh, and a big safety saving for, uh, for all vessels. Uh, this shows two limit lines which are manually controlled. Uh, you can put them anywhere you want. And in this case, we're leaving the French shore and you want to push all the 40 targets which would normally be the 40 closest more toward the middle of the uh, of the traffic lanes so uh, as we approach them you can uh, 
you can see it. Uh, as, as we're seeing here, when they first are acquired, uh, all echoes show up as a, as a uh, circle indicating they're stationary. If they're moving up to a couple of knots, uh, they quickly develop a vector. This way we are very good at separating out uh, slow fishing vessels at uh, uh, three to five knots from uh, stationary buoys. We also track without vector swap, as you can see, as new echoes are acquired and plotted and uh, so forth. And we track, the tankers are being tracked even though they're very, very close and overlapping with almost any other uh, uh, ARPA's tracking system uh, would, would, would be involved with uh, vectors that would be nonsensical. Uh, the lines are, the lines are completely adjustable and um, the acquisition is within approximately a minute, uh, certainly by three minutes, they're fully there to full accuracy. Um, this, <clears throat> again, this shows the French coast shown as a radar image. Uh, it could easily have been just dotted for the closest coastline. In that way, the, the vector and digital output can be put on top of a current e-chart uh, as a closest coastline outlined by dotting rather than spraying radar imagery all over the, uh, the chart so you can't even read it. Uh, that's a requirement of the excess uh, design requirement and uh, our, our approach fully meets it. Here you can see one of the vessels over to the side is showing a, a, a speed up. Uh, <clears throat> The uh, dotted circle around own ship is something that's manually put in. It limits the acquisition range. Uh, that's because frequently a watch officer doesn't adjust the anti-sea clutter well enough and uh, there would be some uh, swapping or, or false echoes require, acquired there. Uh, this means we don't acquire op at all op uh, automatically inside that dotted circle. You can see the separation of the tankers uh, going toward Rotterdam, uh, all going about the same same speed. The limit lines are shown also. Uh, occasionally you'll have a, a buoy or a vessel that will be right more or less on the line and partially acquire. We, we require at least uh, six uh, positive uh, results of the echo scanning uh, to acquire, but if we will hold tracking, if the uh, re repetition is only one echo in 10 scans, we will hang on to a very weak echo and ha give you a very good plot. The bearing ring is shown uh, 360 uh, lit uh, so that it's viewable at night and of course in the daytime, no problem. We will separate the tracking uh, as long as uh, the echo is not completely merged. If there is sec echo separation, we will independently correctly track uh, as we're doing with the two tankers uh, down at the lower left of the uh, screen. You can see the limit line being adjusted that forced a couple of more uh, echoes to be